blooms are not that prominent, uh, visible yet, but all signs, you know, the data from the spring indicates we'll have around moderate to less than moderate uh, levels of uh, algae in this summer. Uh, this is based on just the spring data, but I think uh, the scientists who forecast this at the NOAA and the University of Michigan, uh, they are collecting data for last, you know, July, month of July and June too. So depending on the, the precipitation data that so far we have, I think the prediction would be more refined, but I personally uh, doubt it will change that much. I think we'll see very similar to what we experienced last year, 2023. So we're on par with what you're expecting to see, nothing abnormal at all. Abnormal in in sense if you compare with last couple of years, but this is not a normal situation. Yeah, this I want is, you to explain that to people, what we would expect to see and why the change. Uh so Lake Erie uh, has this algae issue for a number of years. I think most recently in 2003, uh, and we have continued seeing those algae bloom. In the past early 60s, we had this extreme levels of algae blooms, and we literally declared Lake Erie as dead uh, because of the hypoxia, which means l no oxygen uh, because of the algae blooms and f mass fish kill. So because of that, but we took look a lot of actions, both the governments and the Lake Erie recovered from that and became one of the most productive lakes in terms of fisheries and recreation and uh, safe water, source for the safe water for the millions of people. However, in recent years, like early 2000, we have seen again emergence of algae blooms. Algae blooms are, algae is, you know, really important for the lakes and the ecosystem. They are actually main uh, building blocks, right? They are very important, but when they are in excess, they cause problem. And that's why we call, you know, and that's why it's concerned. And it's been almost 20 years we have seen this. And in 2015, there was a really severe algae bloom. 2013, there was a severe al algae bloom. In fact, in uh, 2014, I guess, uh, I remember, uh, Toledo water system was closed, and people had to start drinking bottled water. I remember that. They this. couldn't ba bath. There was an emergency declared. So that's the main concern. You know, it, it has impacts on other resources too, fishing, drinking, uh, people, recreation, property values. So, you, you know, you can <laughs> go on the list. So Yeah. How would you characterize things now? Would you say it's pretty good? No, <laughs> it's not good. I, we, have, we have been seeing continuously every summer it's becoming a, like unfortunately normal but it's not a normal i think especially given the situation of climate change impacts implications the role of invasive species i think that's a, multiplying the impacts and i think you know we need to change our you know direction in terms of taking actions and Governments are taking a lot of, you know, efforts. You know, they have a lot of management. Uh, uh, how do I say? The fundings are there. A lot of actions are happening on the ground. However, most of the actions are voluntary-based. Uh, the regulation part is missing on many levels because if you look at the source of this issue is non-point source, which means it's coming from the landscape, not from the pipe. So, for for example, you know, point sources like for the sewage treatment plant or industries, you know, we know measures, a lot of regulations are there to control them. However, the runoff comes from the land, especially on the farmlands, is not controlled, right? So there is no regulations so far. They are more volunteer based. So, Which makes me wonder with all of the downpours we've seen in the past several days, can you explain how the rain will maybe increase the chance of larger blooms? Yeah, so rain typically, the role of, you know, storm, heavy rainfall is uh, they wash out, wash off the soil, topsoil from the farmland. And especially when you have fertilizers or manure spread over the your landscape, uh, the storm gives the pathway for these pollutants, especially nutrients, to reach from the landscape to the lake. 
So more the phosphorus coming into the lake, you know, the, it's a good food for algae. And however, the important part of phosphorus coming through the rainfall is during the springtime, uh, it's a more bioavailable phosphorus that's causing the algae bloom. So that's why these models that we predict, uh, the the size and severity of this algae bloom for the summer, those are all based on you know spring uh, bioavailable phosphorus. So the phosphorus, which is easily available for uh, algae. Now, if people are out on the water, they notice what they think to be large, green, slimy bloom, what should they do? Should they notify anybody if they're concerned about it at all? Yeah, notifying for local regulatory bodies, uh, whichever jurisdictions you are in. Uh, the second one is most important thing is don't come in contact with it. Don't touch it. Uh, the ch- because algae bloom, most of the time, the scum, we call like, you know, thick, heavy uh, blankets, which are floating on the surface. That's where the toxins are accumulated most of the time. And that's why I keep the pets as well as yourself away from it because they have a toxins and they're not good for your, you know, uh, health. All right. We need to leave it there. Thanks so much, Raj. Thank you. Raj Bajenki Var is from the International Joint Commission joining us in our studio this morning. He's a Windsor-based scientist. The